Hey everyone, this is Jennifer Beamer, owner-operator of Exley Diet Art by Science, and this is the daily vlog, episode number 49, and today I wanted to talk about a botched dyeing job that I did recently. Here we go. Now, it's not a particularly stellar color, and it's not really ugly, but I just didn't like how it turned out. And occasionally this happens, you know, you open up the dye pot and it's like, hmm, something didn't quite happen like I imagined. And um, I was working with um, just primary colors and they weren't kind of blending together in um, the low immersion I was doing, kind of like I thought. Now, um, this will probably happen to you once or twice, especially if you venture out into dyeing because nobody is perfect. Uh, we are human beings. So this is probably going to happen to you, right? So what do you do? Well, you can spin it and that would be fine. It would, it would make a pretty decent yarn. But if you don't love it in this form and you spin up a sample and you're like, well, I don't know if I really like it, um, it's not trash. It's not, you know, just something to get rid of. What you can do is change it. Wool is an incredible medium. I'm falling in love with it more and more each day. You can't really ruin wool. Just because you don't like this color doesn't mean that it's only going to be this color. So let me tell you a funny and embarrassing little story. When I first started dyeing, this was way before I actually dyed even was conceived of, basically. Um, I wanted to sort of try my hand at doing dyeing stuff with food colors. So I quickly went to the kitchen, got all my things out, had this not very expensive wool, put everything together, tossed it in the microwave, um, put it on for probably five minutes, <laughs> and um, well, it was felted. It wasn't entirely felted, but it was mostly felted, and I was very disappointed at making rope, felted rope. So what I did was I grabbed some dog slicker brushes and I pulled out sections that sort of like, I don't know, had mostly one kind of color. Maybe this one had like yellow, but like a little bit of green and red and stuff like that mixed in with it, but in small quantities. So what I did is I pulled off sections, and then what I did is I took my, my little dog cards, dog carding brushes, and I brushed them sort of to get one unified color, which was the dominant color of that section. So you can see here in this example, there's actually a lot of blue, but there's also little bits of green and red and purple, which means um, when I pull this apart, I can kind of do the same process where like this section that's mostly blue, I can pull that section out and when I card it, I can card it so that it stays mostly blue. Um, because I'm really, I'm, I'm a scientist at heart here, and because I'm really into testing and keeping examples on hand, here is that uh, before mentioned yarn. It ended up being a very cool gradient yarn at the end. But you can see that it doesn't look ugly. <laughs> there was actually a good deal of green in this, um, like brown even. But, you know, you can't really tell because um, I carded each, each section several times. Um, I was able to blend most of the colors together so that I got variations in each shade. And then I had on our dining room table, I sort of like laid out the colors. And um, if I wanted to make a gradient, what I would do is sort of like see where there was a big jump in color change. I would take the two that were right next to each other, take half off of each and sort of like combine them and make a new color, which was a little bit from each one, so that there was a, a more gradual change to the next shade, rather than like a huge jump to the next shade. And the result was this um, pretty nice orange to sort of reddish purple gradient yarn. And like I said, it's, it's really not the softest wool in the world, but um, you know, it showed me that you know, this is a really great way to deal with colors that you may not like at first. So that is a process that I'm going to be doing with this. And if you want me to do some kind of like video tutorial or photo tutorial or like something to show you how I do it, 
please let me know, otherwise I'm just going to do this um, in my spare time, which I totally have. Um, but if you want to be part of the process, do let me know and I will definitely make you part of the process because, you know, it's fun to share, right? Show and tell. There's always that, that favorite day of school, right? <laughs> well, maybe for most of us. Anyway, so um, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and a big thank you to all of you who have subscribed to my channel. It gets me in the feels every time I see you guys, um, you know, talking about my videos with me, not on YouTube. That's all. That's so awesome. <laughs> anyway, so uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.